and welcome to ADHD Friendly. I'm Patty Blinderman. I am an ADHD coach and your host of all things ADHD Friendly. If you haven't had a chance to check out my website, I invite you to do that, ADHDfriendly.com, for lots of resources to support you to thrive with ADHD. So welcome, welcome. This is episode 113, 113. So um, keep that in mind if you want to look up any of the resources that are shared in this podcast or you want to comment or share some thoughts, something you learned, something you tried, or another tip that our ADHD friendly community can use to support them with more ease. So in episode 113, I'm going to start as I always do with a celebration. Then I have an ADHD friendly tip that is inspired really from um, a quote from James Clear. And then my topic today is 2023 ADHD friendly holiday tips. I'll get more into that in, a, in just a minute. I was going to preface it with a little information, but I'm like, mm, I'm going to wait. And I'll tell you what that's all about when we get to that part of the pod. So I'm going to start with my celebration and I am giving myself a thumbs up, holding up my thumbs up paddle. If you're listening to this podcast, I invite you to check out my channel on YouTube, ADHD friendly for all things that you want to check out visually, but thumbs up to my process that I captured in my palm for updating my medicine cabinet. Um, if you haven't had a chance to check out those episodes, episode four is when I first dive into doing a medicine cabinet um, revamp where I kind of explored the whole thing and documented the process. It was a really long, much longer than I expected process, but it has benefited me Ever since that first episode, I revisited it in episode 55, where I shared what I learned and what I tweaked. And this weekend, I got to once again benefit from that organization because um, one of my family members woke up and um, had a toothache. And I knew I had something, but I was I, I don't do well with, with people I love being in pain. So I tend to get overwhelmed and um, a little flustered. I was... It's funny because I originally was going to be a nurse way back in the day. So I think I made the right choice, not going to pursue that career field, but um, I couldn't think I literally got emotionally dysregulated and was like, oh my gosh, I know I have something for that. And so I had my list on the outside of my medicine cabinet that I had posted up there when I revisited it and updated all of the things in it. And I was able to go down and I sorted them by type. And I had um, two things in the category of oral care. And so I was able to confirm that, yes, I had it and I was able to find it. And it just put my mind at ease when I saw it on the list. Cause then it was like, I knew exactly what I was looking for instead of, I'm sure I have something. I just can't think of what it is. So that was very sparkly for me. I did notice that I didn't revamp it. Um, like I intended to in October, um, honestly, this conference this year has just thrown off a lot of my systems. And it's just one of those things that I want to notice for myself because I know when things take me out of my routine, my routines can fall off. And it was one of those things I observed. I was grateful that I had the list, but I noticed, hmm, I didn't update the list. So um, didn't do anything with that yet. Really haven't decided if there is anything I need to do. I did do a quick glance at all the expiration dates and nothing looks like it's expiring. Um, in the next, really, um, I can do it again next October, like I'm planning to. And that's probably what I'll end up doing. Thanks for letting me talk that through. I think that's what I'm going to do is just make sure it's on the calendar for October. All right. So that was my celebration that my, my list and the organizational system I put in place to support myself with keeping up with all those different over-the-counter medications and expiration dates and making sure I have what I need on hand for flu and um, cold season, all that served me even for a toothache. So there you go. All right, now onto my ADHD friendly tip for this episode. And this is a quote from James Clear of Atomic Habits. Do I have that over here? Yeah, I do. There it is. Love it. Love it when it's at my fingertips. Um, fabulous book. Lots of great tips. I always say you can tell like how much I'm into a book by all the flags I have going on in it. Um, lots of fabulous accessible tips from James. And this quote really resonated with me with the topic for this podcast being, um, you know, being ADHD friendly with our holidays. So this is from James. He says, be ruthless about what you ignore. Time, energy, and resources are so precious. You have to be ferocious about cutting your priorities, 
more than you realize, and certainly more than is comfortable. You can only deeply commit to a few things, one or two, maybe three. Every pretty good, sort of nice, kind of fun thing you abandon is like shedding a weight, shedding a weighted vest and lets you move at top speed. You were so busy focusing on how much you could carry, you never realized how fast you could run. Or I'm sorry, he said, you never realized you could run this fast. I did a little ad living there. I love this so much because I do feel like we are metaphorically going through our days trying to hold on to things. I know if I try to hold on to things in my brain because I have very weak working memory, I'm agitated. If anything pops up on my radar that can potentially throw one of those things out of my working memory, I get irritated and frustrated because I know how vapor-like those things already are. And it's taking so much effort to hold on to them that I'm very mindful of my need to write things down. So it's my go-to. I have little notebooks everywhere. So I can do just that because it's gone if I don't capture it. So I love this idea that James shares about, you know, we have a lot of things that cross our mind, like, oh, wouldn't it be great if, and the holidays are no exception. If anything, I would say it's almost a higher expectation that you will do more. You'll fit in more in the time that you have and the energy that you have to do the things that you're trying to do. So really keeping in mind, what is it that is the most important thing for you? And how can you let go of the things that, yeah, it would be sort of nice, but it's not the most important thing and it will take your energy. So my question for our ADHD friendly tip from James Clear is, what would you abandon to remove that weight that you're carrying so that you can go faster, you can be more efficient because you're not asking yourself to do everything. We can't do everything, but we can do some things. So it really is about identifying what are those things that are worth carrying so that we can shed the weight that we don't want to be carrying. And I don't mean for physical weight. I realize the way that sounds like I sound like a, an ad for um, a weight loss program. I mean, the things that we're literally expecting of ourselves and holding on to that expectation, either from ourselves or from society or from other family or friends and giving ourselves permission to notice how much lighter we feel how much more energy we have if we're not expected to do all of these things. And we've decided these are the things that are most important to me and that I'm going to keep on my schedule, but I'm letting go of the rest. So thanks James for that tip. Hello friends, I'm ADHD friendly girl. Are you overwhelmed, unmotivated, run down? Do you stop before you start? The answer to your challenges can be found at ADHD friendly. ADHD Friendly is where we, where we make the doing easier. Join ADHD Friendly today and start tilting the playing field in favor of your ADHD brain and start thriving. ADHDfriendly.com, where intention meets action. All right, on to our topic for this episode, which is 2023 ADHD friendly tips for the holiday, 2023 holiday season. So if you would like to check out previous episodes where I shared um, additional tips that what I call them my tried and true repeats, I invite you to check out episode eight and episode 58. At episode 58, I talk about holiday tolerations, but I really get into kind of diving into what we kind of what I just talked about from the James Clear quote, what are you expecting yourself? What can you let go of? And how do you remember the things that you've decided are the most important for the holidays in your life? So what I always say, my, my quote, every holiday, whenever my kids or my husband has asked me what I would like for Christmas, what I always say is all I want is peace on earth and goodwill towards all. That's really what I want. I've always wanted just peace and calm because it's just kind of elusive sometimes. So I, it's what I always most wanted, especially when my kids were little. I was like, I just want a calm Christmas. I just want a nice holiday season without stress or conflict. And so my tip that comes from that, uh, if that resonates with you, if, if having peace on earth, earth and goodwill towards all resonates with you, that feeling of calm for the holidays is something that you'd like more of in your holiday season. My tip is capture 
and observe. And so I always talk about capturing successes and capturing evidence of strengths. And, and this is another capture category, but this I'm talking about, uh, maybe this holiday season is the year that you observe what you do, what you're committing to, whether it's just keeping it on your calendar and then you go back and review your calendar and see, do you wanna keep these things going year after year or is there something you'd wanna let go of? Or maybe it's observing your process. So whether it's um, making the holiday meal, where do you keep the recipes? How long do things take? When do you start cooking? Those things that, because it's once a year, we really do lose the thread of them from year to year. And it can be really frustrating, first of all, to have to recreate them, but it also takes a lot of mental effort and energy. And it's very draining to have to keep reinventing the wheel. So maybe there's certain things that you do every year, but you don't have it captured in a, a process that you can just then rinse and repeat you're asking yourself every year to recreate that list or re, you know, kind of remember those, those traditions and routines. So my tip is observe what you do and capture what works and maybe even what didn't work. So maybe you got something you're like, you know, this didn't really go well. I don't want to do that again. And you make a note so that next year you remember why it's just, instead of just what I always call it, it's just this little like nudge of, I don't think I liked it, but I don't remember why. So I can't kind of push back against committing to it because I don't have that example that's helping me to remember what it was about it that didn't work for me. So maybe I do it again because I don't remember it. And I want to support myself next year not to have that happen again. So capture what works or doesn't. And if you know you will struggle to, struggle to capture things, maybe there's another friend or family member that will be around you during the holidays that you can say, hey, could you write down like the order that we do things on Christmas Eve or Christmas morning or um, whatever holiday you celebrate? If, if you're not celebrating Christmas, but you're celebrating Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, whatever it is that your family celebrates, if you know you're not that person to capture those details, there might be somebody else that that's one of their strengths. And it can be something that we're leaning into. This isn't my strength, but I'm going to ask you to capture the details in a neutral, non-judgmental way. Just capture them. And then you can even say, Hey, could you write this down? Cause I'm noticing, I don't want to do this. <laughs> could you make a note on the, on the, the master list, whatever you guys decide to call it. And then once you have that list, you've captured it in a way that you can now observe what do you want to do with it? You may not do anything until with it until next year. So maybe you tuck it in your personal owner's manual. For more on owner's manuals, I invite you to check out ADHD Friendly for some tips and even a, a mini POM to get you started, POM, personal owner's manual. Um, again, what brought this to light for me was my husband asked me where all of the recipes were for, for Thanksgiving this year. And he had gone through all of our, our recipe books. And these are all printed out or pages from magazines that we've you know kind of taken and used over and over the different recipes for the dishes that we make. And as soon as I went to go start looking again, where he had already clearly gone through and looked and couldn't find them, I remembered I put them all in my palm in my personal owner's manual, which is a little bulky right now and needs to be curated a little bit, but it's full of like, oh my gosh, the most helpful tips. And so I, I remembered I had this little like clip holding all of the holiday traditions together and I just pulled it out and I had all of the recipes. I had my little um, timing spreadsheet. I shared this, I think last year where I wrote down what we cook and what time it goes in and what the temperature oven needs to be set at and even who cooks it <laughs> so we could remember. And oh my gosh, it just works so much effortlessly. We don't have to kind of do that math and back up the time. Like if we want to eat it four, we do this and then we had company come in and, you know, flights got, uh, delayed. And so we could just literally adjust the timing based on the spreadsheet instead of having to do all that math in the moment. So it just made it so much easier because what I always want to say is when you capture it, you have something to go from, and you know what one of my mantras is, something is always more than nothing. So if you capture a few details, you then can build on it every year going forward because you took a, a beat, you stopped and you captured it in a way that you can go back to and use again. So that's my tip for this year. Just capture and observe so that you're hopefully creating more peace and calm and connection in your family for this holiday season. All right, time for my quote. 
This is from Excellent Advice for Living. One day I'll remember the name of this book without having to look at it, but I'm not there yet. From Kevin Kelly, who just has like a ton of, um, just filled with little tips. Um, and this is tied to what we're talking about. So Kevin Kelly's uh, quote that I'm going to share with you today is this. He says, shorten your to-do list by asking yourself, and this is his quote, what, what is the worst that will happen if this does not get done? That's it. And then he says, eliminate all but the disasters. Oh my gosh. Again, it goes back to what I shared at the beginning with James Clear's quote. What could we let go of to lighten the load, to make it easier to do the things that are most important to us? So what is the worst that will happen if this does not get done? Excellent advice, Kelly, Kevin Kelly. Excellent advice. Thank you for that. So just a really quick recap. This is episode 113. Be ruthless and identify your holiday priorities so that you can capture what worked, get it in your palm. Something is always more than nothing. You'll have it going forward to continue supporting your future self. That's it for this episode. Until next time, tally ho.